Sunday afternoon to each one of you. What a delight it is to welcome you uh, to this annual Penns Creek Camp School Service. And uh, it is great to be here. Amen. Is it okay to say it's just good to be home? Amen. My wife's watching me. Hi, honey. She's not missed a Penns Creek Camp school service in 50 years. And, um, but after about 48 hours of our time together in the hospital, because the first 48 hours wasn't pleasant, you know, I came to the realization that God is sovereign. And he doesn't need me to have camp meeting. We need him. And he doesn't need me to have a successful school. We need him. He doesn't even need me to raise the money because he has it and he's in charge. And I thank God for his presence. I've watched the services. I've been enjoying them as they've been preaching. And, um, and it's just a delight to be here this afternoon. Let me share my prepared remarks today and we enjoy this, uh, this day together. There's something special and exciting about coming to camp meeting. You see, the camp meeting movement came into existence on the American frontier over two centuries ago and still lives on today. I remember the first camp meeting that I ever attended in Pell City, Alabama. H.E. Darnell, J.M. Sullivan, R.E. Carroll, and the Edwards family ministering. I made a commitment to God that from that day forward, I would be a part of a family camp meeting and would take my family with me. It was at a camp meeting where I settled many things around an altar. It was at a camp meeting where God called me to preach right here in this very ta tabernacle, to preach the gospel, to proclaim the glorious message of heart holiness. It was even at a camp meeting that my son Darren sought God and gave his heart and life to Jesus Christ, and he was the only seeker that night under the preaching of Brother Atwell. Today, my wife Michelle is in the hospital with both legs broken from a fall last week, and she will miss Penns Creek Camp for the first time in her life, 50 years. And we thank God for your prayers and your support during an incredibly difficult time for her. She, along with our son Derek, who is with her right now, are watching this camp meeting live stream service because they love Penns Creek Camp. Simply put, our entire family thanks God for Penns Creek Camp. This is home, and we're glad to see you today. Penview Bible Institute and Christian Academy is also thankful for camp meeting. For this very camp meeting, and it's committed to its very existence, Penview was born out of this camp meeting. It was during a camp meeting here on these grounds that, that groundbreaking took place. How many of you were at groundbreaking back there a number of years ago? Would you hold your hand? Would you stand if able? If you were at groundbreaking, would you stand? Wow, can we give them a hand? What a crowd. Thank you. You may be seated. It was during that groundbreaking camp meeting and during that camp meeting that, that many witnessed the seal of God's approval upon Penview Bible Institute and Christian Academy. It's because of this camp meeting. Because of this camp meeting, the first $25,000 was raised. Today, we are praying for $100,000. We need it. Because of this camp meeting, many young people have answered the call to preach, teach, and go to the mission field. And today we are praying that more young people will answer the call of God to do His work. Amen. Penview wants to see young people called to preach and teach. We want to see young people called to missions and to share Jesus Christ with the little people of our day. We, we want to see young people minister through music and medicine to a world that is hurting and needy. We want to see children and young people your children, your young people, come to the academy and college and receive a Christian education that is biblically based, academically solid, and most importantly, spirit-filled. I want to say thank you for taking the time to come to our camp meeting school service today. We could not exist without you. And my prayer is that this Penview service will be uplifting and inspiring. We want to focus on the goodness of God because God is good. Regardless of your circumstances or my circumstances or our circumstances, it doesn't change the fact that God is good. And He's worthy of our worship and our praise. Penview enjoys a beautiful campus, wonderful facilities, and ministry-focused programs. However, our greatest assets and blessings are the people that make up Penview. The students that walk the halls are the product 
and the reason we exist. We're grateful for every child and young person that God sends our way. As you open the PVBI Today summer issue, and perhaps you've already done that and you've seen it, you'll see the names and faces of our committed, dedicated, and qualifying faculty and staff. These people do not consider what they're doing a sacrifice but a privilege to multiply the kingdom of God by teaching and preparing your children and young people. So we trust you'll pray for them, support them in this upcoming school year. We're trusting God for it. Thanks for coming to this service this afternoon. I pray that God will especially bless our time together. Stand with me. Reverend Solomon Schaefer, an alumnus and one of our board members, is going to open with prayer, after which uh, we'll have a congregational song led by Brother McDonald. Let's worship the Lord today. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we come before you in this afternoon service, and I pray that you would shut us in with your presence. We pray that when we leave here, we'll be blessed by the update, by the ministry of the school. Give anointing and help today. I pray that uh, you would just continue to bless uh, the school in a special way, to be, to be making an impact on our churches, to be sending young people out that make a difference in our world. It's why we're here, to make a difference. And I pray that you would help us to do just that. Bless this entire time, everything that is said and done, and for what you do, we'll give you the glory and honor and praise. And all God's people said, amen. amen. Remain standing, if you would, please. Take your hymnal and turn to number three. Number three, to God be the glory. Amen. 
you for that good singing. You may be seated. It is so good to be here with you this afternoon. And you're going to be hearing some updates, some testimonies. You're going to be hearing from our PR groups this afternoon. They have been traveling all over the country, and we're happy to be back home. And so it is good to be here with you. Heritage is first up. Come and minister in song this afternoon. Don't you think we should? Oh, I've come here to tell you that the Lord is good. Lazarus knew just what it meant to hear from the Lord. He got up from the grave when he heard Lazarus come forth. From that moment on and for the rest of his days, he testified, I am alive and I will give him praise. I've come here to tell you will endure forever like you said it would so let's exalt his name together don't you think we should oh i've come here to tell you that the lord is good he's the lamp unto my feet and he leads the way he's the bread when i am hungry day after day jehovah jireh my provider my prince of peace I have found in Jesus everything that I need, oh, I've come here to tell you that the Lord is good, His mercy will endure forever like you said it would, so let's exalt His name together, don't you think we should, oh, I've come here to tell you that the Lord is good, He's good. time good all the time good i've come here to tell you that the lord is good his mercy will endure forever like you said it would so let's exalt his name together don't you think we should i've come here to tell you that the lord is good let's exalt his name together don't you think we should? I've come here to tell you that the Lord is good. He's good. good. I've come here to tell you that the Lord is good. Well, good afternoon. We are Heritage Quartet, and we're just going to take a quick minute to introduce ourselves. My name is Ryan Dickin. I'm from Penns Creek, Pennsylvania, and I'm a sophomore in the Biblical Studies Division. Hello, my name is Ashley Plank. I'm from Mifflinburg, Pennsylvania, and I am a senior in the Biblical Studies Division. Hello, my name is Ethan McDonald. I am from Penns Creek, Pennsylvania, and I am a sophomore in the Secondary Education Division. Good afternoon. My name is Mark Winkler. I am from Ottawa, Kansas, and I am a sophomore in the General Missions Division. Playing the piano for us this afternoon is my sister, Regina Dickin, who is also from right here in Penns Creek, Pennsylvania, and she is currently a freshman in the Biblical Studies Division. Well, it's truly great to be home, and uh, I'm glad that I can testify with that last song that we sang, that the Lord's been good. You know, and, and it's been a long summer, but I'm thankful that I have a God who's been with me right beside me the whole way. He's held my hand every time I've needed him. Every time I've needed strength and grace and help, he's been right there for me. So I'm glad I can testify to that this afternoon, that God's been good and that he will remain good. And I can trust in the fact that he will be good and he will be there for me when I need him in the future. This next song that we have to sing just speaks of giving all the glory to Christ. And that's truly what we intend to do this afternoon is to worship and magnify our creator, our great and wonderful Lord. So we invite you to worship with us as we sing this afternoon. See 
God for everything he's done for me this past summer throughout my entire life. I know that God's been good. I know that God's been faithful to me even when I didn't feel like it. And though there's times I'd failed God and I know that God has always been faithful to me. He's always been right there by my side waiting for me to turn back to him, waiting for me to ask for forgiveness. And I want to thank God for, for him just being faithful to me and I want to uh, go on and serve him. Full 
of thankfulness. God has never failed me yet, even though I failed him time and again. He just keeps on loving me. He supplies my every need for as long as I can. for those songs and I would echo that as my testimony God has been nothing but good good afternoon and thank you for the privilege of representing the Academy here at Penview another year of classes has come and gone since last year's Penn's Creek school service classrooms were set up lessons were taught lessons learned another set of graduates marched down this very aisle received their diplomas turned their tassels and have moved to the next phase of life However, at Penview Christian Academy, it was not just another year of school. Over and over again, I had witnessed and seen the goodness and faithfulness of God at school. He showed himself true in our classrooms, in our chapel services, and in the lives of our students. And I praise him that he is still speaking, working, and moving. One area that I saw God's goodness and faithfulness, as I mentioned, was our chapel services. Our middle school, grades six, seven, and eight, meet for, meet for chapel services Monday morning. This group of students was special to me, and I told them time and time again, I enjoy having chapel with you. In fact, this is my favorite chapel service of the week to attend. They were sincere, they were honest, they gave the best testimonies out of the academy students, and the times that we had praying around the altar with them were ones I won't soon forget. I was encouraged this summer when a parent shared with me that their children are still talking about chapel services that happened earlier in the spring. Something stuck with them, and they've carried it with them throughout this summer. The high school teacher shared with me 
often throughout the year that the students would want to discuss chapel services after we had gone back up for class. Sometimes even a couple days after a message was spoken, they would, they would want to ask questions or discuss what was said, and that's an encouraging thing. God is being faithful to our students. This year has also been marked by specific instances of God working and moving in individual student lives. From the first day I came here, I told our students it's not a bad thing to come to the principal's office. In fact, some of you should do it on your own before you have to. <laughs> it was during the last days of school in May that I found a certain young man at my door, and he was more ready for summer than most, and I thought I would have to give him the, you only have a few days left, you can do this, keep doing your work, keep studying, be prepared. Summer break is almost here, but our conversation was quite different. He sat down, and after a moment, he asked me a simple question. He said, why should I go to Bible college? He went on to explain, everyone tells us that we should and that it's a good thing, but Mr. Belch, you know me. You know what I intend to do with life. Why would Bible college be a good fit for me? As I had that conversation with that young man, I saw God's faithfulness once again, beginning to work and move in the life of an individual who, although a Christian and is going to do good things with his life, really didn't have Bible college on his radar. But he was beginning to let God work and move and speak to him. God's goodness and faithfulness. Amen. Throughout the summer, I've had the privilege to uh, communicate with different parents, whether that's a phone call or a message or coming up and visiting me in the office. And I'm getting good reports that our students are having a good summer. God is helping them spiritually. They're maturing. They're growing. They're stepping out to share their faith. Their lives are a testimony to that goodness and faithfulness of God. Truly, God has been faithful. Looking towards the new school year, it is our primary goal to partner with you, the parents of our students, in the education of your children. We're excited to do that as our enrollment is right at 200 students. We welcome back many current students as well as several new faces to the academy. I'd like to share with you the new teachers and new roles that our teachers will be serving this year. Mrs. Brianna Spangler will be transitioning from our fifth grade classroom to our kindergarten and preschool. We're excited about the enthusiasm and love for students that Ms. Spangler demonstrates. Welcome to this new role, Mrs. Spangler. Mrs. Linda Aiken is our new third, Ms. Linda Aiken is our new third grade teacher. Ms. Aiken is a 2023 PVBI graduate. She also holds certifications in working with children from her home country of Northern Ireland. Ms. Aiken is a dedicated, compassionate person. We are excited to welcome her to the academy. Ms. Brianna Brenizer is our new fifth grade teacher. Ms. Brenizer is also a 2023 Penview graduate salutatorian of her class. She did a phenomenal job student teaching in our middle school. She's able to relate to students in a unique and special way, and we look forward to great things in fifth grade this year. Our new 8th through 12th grade science teacher is one of our very own, Mr. Dustin Durkee. Mr. Durkee is a current instructor in the EMS program of the Institute, and he has been a high school class sponsor. We are happy to welcome him to the academy. He relates well to young people. With his training and work experience in the medical field, we are looking forward to a great year in the science department of the academy. And now, we stand on the cusp of a new school year. In just a few short weeks, classes will begin. But not just another year. I am looking, seeking, and praying for God to show himself faithful in a fresh and powerful way. That's the very reason we as Penview are here. Our teachers love education. They love young people. But more so, we love Jesus and what he has done for us. We love him so much, we can't help but share his faithfulness with our students. In my closing, I would like to ask you to pray for us in the academy in three specific ways for this coming school year. Pray that the teachers and myself will have strength, strength physically, mentally, and spiritually. We are at a school, but we are also on a battleground. Where God is at work, the enemy is also at work. Please pray for us. Pray that God's presence will be real and sensed in our classes. And pray that our students will see the true joy that serving Jesus brings. That's our goal. That's our purpose. 
to point them to him. Thank you for allowing me to represent the academy and share how God has been good and faithful over this past school year. At this time, our praise singers are coming to share with us. Thank you. everyone, everywhere, to every burden, every care, to every heartache, every joy, and every life, to every purpose, every dream, for every question, to everything, he's the answer for everyone, every time, on the road you're have you wondered? Does God's helping hand reach out to me? Everyone's included is the answer. God extends his goodness faithfully to everyone, everywhere, to every burden, every care. To every heartache, every joy, and every life. To every purpose, every dream, for every question, to everything. He's the answer for everyone, every time. According to his riches, he supplies. Everything your soul will ever need. Out of his abundance, he's providing. Gifts designed to last eternally. To everyone, everywhere, to every burden, every care. To every heartache, every joy, and every life. To every purpose, every dream, for every question, to everything. He's the answer for everyone, every time. To everyone, everywhere, to every burden, every care, to every heartache. Every joy and every life, to every purpose, every dream, for every question, to everything, he's the answer for everyone, every time. He's the answer for everyone, he's the answer for everyone, he's the answer for everyone. Every time, every time. Amen. Well, what a faithful God we serve. A God that is present, a God that is true, and a God that is with us every step of the way. And any time that we need him, he's there every single time, waiting for us to call out to him. We're going to take a quick moment to introduce ourselves. We are the Praise Singers. My name is Eric Susan. I'm from New Columbia, Pennsylvania, and I'm a junior in the ministerial department. Well, greetings. It's awesome to be here this afternoon and good to be home. My name is Nathan Packer. I'm from Thomasville, North Carolina, and I'm a senior in the music department. Good afternoon. My name is Jacob Bloker. I'm from Sheridan, Indiana. And I'm a senior in the ministerial department. It's good to be with you all today. My name is Blake Cassidy. I'm from Beavertown, Pennsylvania. And I'm a junior in the ministerial department. Here at the piano, we have Jeffrey Byer from Duncanic, Pennsylvania. He's a junior in the music department. Well, I think um, maybe you're getting the feeling we kind of enjoy being here. You know, it's, it's good to be back. We've set a time. In, you know, we got in last night about 1 o'clock. And uh, one of the quartet, other quartet guys came. And uh, he said, you know what? It's just good to see people from Penview. 
I agree. It's just good to see people from Penview. Amen. Penview people are good people to look at, aren't they? Well, you don't have to say amen to that. No, I'm thankful for who God is. He's a good, good God. And uh, I haven't lived very long in life. Um, and uh, maybe you can call me a young whippersnapper if you want to. But I've seen time and time again that God knows exactly what we're going through. And not only does he know, but as Brother Durkee said earlier, he's sovereign over all. He rules over all. None, nothing catches him by surprise. And I've also found out that when we're going through things in life that maybe we don't understand or that we just don't quite like, God cares. He knows exactly what you're going through. Today, I don't know what you're going through, but I do know that I have a God, and He can be your God that cares, and He knows exactly what you're going through. You may not have the answers to the questions in your life, and you and I may never know all the reasons why you feel you've been forsaken if someone only Someone only understood just what you're going through. God knows, God cares. He holds the answers to all. On the cross, 
so you and I would know that God knows. Well, this afternoon, I'm glad that is a reality. That it's not just words that are being sung. It's not just music that is being played. But God gave His only Son that we would know that He cared enough for us. I think of an illustration sometimes about a plane. However many of you have been in a plane before and looked down. The first time I rode in a plane, I was very little, but the second time I was a little bit big enough to understand, and I looked down, and I had the realization that we're pretty small, but we serve a big God. And he knows enough about us that he cares enough for us that he would send his son to die for us. And that's something that just thrills my soul today, that he came, he found me, he saved me, and he sanctified me holy, and I can walk a holy life before a holy God. It's not my own strength, it's not my own power, but it's by the blood of the Lamb. And I'm so grateful for that. But I also realize that sometimes God knows the doors that may be opening before you. And sometimes in our own selves, we may be a little bit scared to, because we may not know what's behind or before us. But God knows. And he will give you the strength, as this next song states, that beyond the open door, there's a new and fresh anointing of his Holy Spirit. And I'm so grateful that there is, that he can give us the strength to walk through that door. And I just want to do that in my life. I want to follow the Lord with all my heart. And I want to make it to heaven. And I want to take others with me. In the things familiar we find security resisting all the changes that days and years can bring when god decides to lead you through an open door inviting you to walk in you've never known before beyond the open door is a new and fresh anointing hear the spirit calling you to go walk on through the door for the lord will go Oh 
walk on through the door, for the Lord will go before you into a greater power you've never known before. Walk on through the door, for the Lord will go before you. so that when you go through that open door, that new and fresh anointing, the Spirit calling you, when He guides you and He directs you, He shows the way, He'll provide all that you need. And I have found that to be so. Thank you, quartets, for your ministry this afternoon. And I'm truly, God has been good to us this past year. We I just had a wonderful year in so many, many ways. And we thank God for His help Watching young people walk through the open door, answering the call to preach and to teach and to, and to proclaim the good news of Jesus through children's ministry or music ministry or medical ministry or, or whatever the case may be. And I'm telling you, it is exciting. And we thank God for it. Since we were here last year, last fall, intercession, spring, even our summer session, and we've had 93 different students in college over the last year. And we thank God for every young person that walks through the door. And, and uh, I thank God. You know, this gentleman whose picture's on the wall, who our conference was started because of his, his, his passion, his love, and he gave his heart to the Lord. And Brother Straub, I didn't have the privilege to meet him. He was gone a couple years before I arrived. But he had a vision that in order for this conference to go forward, and to be what it needs to be, that we'd have to train our own. We'd have to. And thank God for his vision as well as the host of others that were a part of his era. And uh, they've handed this to us. And I thank God. I thank God over and over and over again. It's hard to believe this is the seventh school service since uh, I was elected president. And it's just hard to believe that. It seems like it was just two years ago uh, at times. But God has been so good to us. Uh, I got, I, I got, you know, I, I thank God when I get good reports and good news. And um, I got, I got this report. Greetings in the name of Jesus uh, from beautiful Western Colorado. I just wanted to drop you a line of commendation and encouragement. Off and on throughout the summer, we have had a certain student worshiping and teaching here among us. He has been a willing to participate, and that wholeheartedly, we've been blessed by his obedience to God. His seemingly st uh, stable life and his relationship with God. And if he is representative of what God is doing among the staff and students of Penview, I want to encourage you all to keep on doing what you're doing. It is a blessing to the work of God. And uh, I got that report and I said, well, praise the Lord. That encourages somebody when you need encouraged. I, I got this letter uh, from a different place in the state of New York. I just want to let you know what a blessing so-and-so was at Victory Grove Camp. Uh, he would have made you proud. He took camp very seriously, working many days before camp started to help get ready. And then during camp for the first half, he was in charge of garbage. Responsibly saw, it, saw to it and worked with mopping the dining hall every night. He was on the front seat or second seat every service and always had many kids sitting with him under his watch. He did devotions in the early morning prayer service one day youth devotions another day, and at night he often helped with the time the youth shared together. He was quick to be up at the altar praying with people, and anything else you asked him to do, he was right there. He was such a blessing and a wonderful example during the camp. I just want you to know you could be proud of him and what he is allowing God to do in his life. He got, he's got the goods, no question about that. Well, I thought, well, that's encouraging, one of our students. I got this report from another place in the state of Ohio. Tonight, so-and-so is here at our camp, and they are absolutely incredible. Their song choice spirit and their sound, very nice. You can be proud. 
I thought, well, praise the Lord for that report. And then I got this letter. I got this letter. And I know it wouldn't take some of you long to figure out who these people are, but it's not the names that matter. What matters is God is doing something significant with the young people he's sending here that want God to do something in their life. And if you want God to do something in your life, he'll do something. He'll make a difference if you have the want to. And oh, I'm so excited. This letter came to me. I'm writing to express our profound gratitude and heartfelt appreciation for the extraordinary generosity and unwavering dedication demonstrated by a group during tonight's One Night Youth Revival. Their willingness to sacrifice their well-deserved day off to minister to our young people left an indelible impression on all of us. We recognize and understand the tremendous strain and commitment that ministry entails and the rarity of a day off. It is with great admiration that we witness the character exemplified by these young men. Their godly conduct, genuine love displayed throughout their interactions with everyone they encounter stands as a true and living testament to the teachings of Christ and embody the essence of servant leadership. We thank God for these spirit-anointed young people singing, playing the piano, preaching, it will leave an enduring impact on our congregation. The evident passion and devotion they put into the ministry were nothing short of inspiring and uplifting. Their selflessness, their dedication to spreading the message of faith, hope, and transformative love. May the ministry continue to touch countless lives and inspire others, and on and on we can go. When I got that, I was just blessed, Dr. Cooley, of the young people that God continues to help raise up, some of which are here even this afternoon. I received this note from um, Brian Hipple. He's the chief of Dauntless Hook and Ladder Ambulance League in Sealands Grove. He said, I am so grateful for the Penview EMS program. Since it has started, I have not had to worry about providers. I've had the privilege to hire numbers of your students, and they're always good workers. They know what they're doing, and we don't have to worry about them. In talking about a case in which a person had a major heart attack, the head cardiologist of Geisinger Medical Center said this, I don't know who the providers were on this call, but everything they did was perfect, allowing for the best possible outcome. These were uh, some of our EMS instructors and students serving to save the lives of people. And um, I just thank God for reports like that from people in our community that our young people are walking through the open doors to minister, whether it's preaching, whether it's teaching, whether it's singing, whether it's playing, whether it's praying, whether it's taking care of the garbage and, and whatever it might be, or helping people in a medical way. I thank God for the college students that he continues to send our way. And if God is speaking to you and there's some kind of nudge in your life, just walk through the open door and roll at Penview. You'll never be sorry. And everybody said amen. amen. All right, there you have it. Thank God, thank God, thank God. Our chairman of the board and camp president and our, um, our conference president and a personal friend, Brother Jacob Martin, you've got a presentation right now. God's Missionary Church Scholarship, we award, award them each year. And um, one of them participants, Will Black, is not here. He's out of state ministering, trying to be a blessing. Uh, so he's one of those. Alan Stump, come forward, please. God's Missionary Church Scholarship Award to Alan Stump, the God's Missionary Church, because of the great commission given by our Lord Jesus Christ to go and teach all nations in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, is presenting the ministerial scholarship to a worthy minister student of Penview Bible Institute. The scholarship will provide 50% of tuition for two semesters and intercession at Penview Bible Institute for the academy year 2023 and 2024. And Brother Allen has received this before, and we received it this year again because we have confidence in him. He's taken a big step to take a church while he's still in school, and we as the board are all the way behind him as he continues to do God's will, and we wanted to reward him because sometimes we don't do the second one, kind of what we do, but we just felt like that's exactly what we do. We're all the way behind you. We love you. We know God's going to continue to use you. God bless you. I want to say a great big thank you to my conference and the support that they show time and time again. And there's many, many men 
that I have confidence in and I can go to, and it uh, doesn't matter what I'm facing, I can confide in them and uh, the board, the general board, different ones I know, and it's just great to know that I have men that are ahead of me, leading, guiding, and I can go to and, uh, and turn to. And I also thank the Lord for Penview, and uh, I don't mean that lightly. Me and my dad were rem reminiscing the other day about uh, some different life changes over the past and how there came a point where my mom and dad wanted to make sure we got into a good school, and they made the move to this area and put us in Penview, and, and I, don't, I, I can't even express the impact that that will make in my life. And only eternity can tell what that will actually mean. And I know we hear that. I know we say that. But I mean it. That single decision. And we can't expect our schools to fix people because we need to stop expecting our actual schools to fix people. They don't fix people. But Penview is a place that if, if young people are hungry for God, it is a growing ground. It is a, is, is a, is a nurturing place to grow their love for God, to grow their knowledge of God, and it really makes a difference. It really makes a difference. So I thank you, Brother Durkee, Dr. Cooley, and all the others. Not that they're responsible, but they're the ones I'm under now, and I appreciate them so much. Thank you again. Thank you, God's Missionary Church. Appreciate you so much. Give my hat one more time. Can we do that? Congratulations, Alan. God bless you. If you've ever been a student, elementary, middle school, high school, college, one day, 15 years, you've ever taught, staff, employed here at any level, would you stand to your feet right now, just all throughout this crowd, just stand up, keep standing, just keep standing, wow, keep standing, look at the rest of you, would you stand up and just shake hands with somebody who's been a part of Penview and tell them thank you, God bless you, amen, amen, then you may be seated. You may be seated. Majesty's coming right now to sing a couple of songs. Let's continue to mind the Lord and worship the Lord. It's good to have all the alumni here. And um, don't go anywhere. Uh, the best is yet to come. I could never praise Him enough. For the cross of Calvary, I could never thank him enough. For salvation, full and free, I could never do anything to deserve such perfect love. Oh, for everything he's done, I could never praise him enough. For many years I've served the Lord the best that I know how, giving unto him my time and telling of his power. But if I were to spend unending hours on my knees, praising him for everything he's ever done for me, I could never praise him enough. For the cross of Calvary, I could never thank him enough. For salvation, full and free, I could never do anything to deserve such perfect love. Oh, for everything he's done, I could never praise him enough. of Calvary, I could never thank him enough for salvation, full and free. I could never do anything to deserve such perfect love. Oh, for everything he's done, 
I could never praise Him enough. I could never do anything to deserve such perfect love. Oh, for everything He's done. Oh, for everything He's done. Oh, for everything He's done. I could never praise Him enough. I'm so thankful that's more than just a song that God has been so good and I could never praise him enough for all he's done and we're just delighted to be back with you guys and we're going to take a moment to introduce ourselves we're Majesty Trio my name is Elizabeth Hemeter I'm from Frankfurt Indiana and I'm a sophomore in our missions division hello I'm Michaela Weaver I'm from Elizabethville Pennsylvania and I'm a sophomore in the music division well good afternoon my name is Evie Shirey I'm from Middleburg Pennsylvania and I'm a sophomore in our biblical studies division and over the piano, we have Mary McIntosh. She's from Oakwood, Ohio, and she is a sophomore in our music division. This next song that we're going to sing talks about our wonderful, merciful Savior, and it kind of just lists some different titles of what Jesus is to us. And as I think back over my life, there are so many different uh, stages of my life where Jesus has been something different to me. At times, he's just been my counselor and let me know what I needed to know. At times, he's corrected me and, and got me back on the right track. At times, he's comforted me and held me like a father. And I'm so thankful that no matter where I'm at in life, Jesus knows what I need and he is what I need. And I love him this afternoon.
Well, I found that to be so. He's worthy of praise, and he knows when to bring grace and healing. And uh, I couldn't help but think, you know, it seems like this summer there's been just a number of our people who have faced physical afflictions and surgeries. I thought of Sister Stetler. I thought of Rachel Clough. I thought of Brother Habecker's wife. I thought of Dr. Cooley. His wife just come home from the hospital, and he was in the hospital in surgery. And, and um, of course, Brother Zeckman. Our president emeritus, his wife, Sister Zekman, and all that she's faced. And I could just keep going on and on, and I, I get started, you know. But, but God's able. He's, he's able. He's been giving that healing touch, and that's help. And I, I thank him for it. And um, it is a real privilege this afternoon um, to take a few minutes. And I want you to stay with us. We do, we're doing this on purpose, all right? And, um, but we have one among us that we'd like to take a little time to honor today. Dr. Timothy L. Cooley has been our academic dean here at Penview for 40 years. And um, we, we've done a few things at school at the end of the year, but, but uh, I've asked a few people um, to come and just share a couple of moments, a couple of minutes, remarks, um, some older, some younger, and just to share a few remarks. You know, I think it was H.G. Schmuel uh, who said that you do your giving while you're living so you're knowing where it's going, Right? And um, so many times when you do something like this, it's because somebody is laying in a casket in front of a pulpit somewhere. Um, there's no casket here today. Hallelujah. <laughs> We're here, alive and well. And um, we thank God for Dr. Cooley. And um, we have a few remarks that we'd like to share at this time. President Emeritus John Zeckman will begin, and then there'll be a few others that will follow in sequence that you've been instructed to. So God bless them as they share. Thank you, Brother Durkee, and certainly I'm honored to be able to have a part in uh, giving some honor to uh, Dr. Cooley. I wish he was sitting right here. I have to turn around to look at you with the things I want to say. But uh, uh, our friendship goes back 60 years, and uh, we had the privilege to attend Penview together, set in Brother Stepp's class, and uh, we, uh, he and his wife, Ruth, was not wife then, and my wife, who's my wife now, not then. Brother Cooley, is it okay if we talk about something that's just a little humorous now? <laughs> One day, Brother Cooley and I, and my, now my wife Martha, and his wife Ruth, we got down here to the old dining hall. Anyone remember the old dining hall? That's now the dorm. Yes, sure, Brother Walter, another hand in the back. We got down here to the dining hall. We didn't walk down together, but it just happened that Martha got there about the same time I got to the door. So we stood in line together. And, yeah, that's right. That's right, Ashley. <laughs> and Ruth got there about the same time Brother Cooley did, and we stood in line together to get our lunch. And it wasn't long after we uh, left the dining hall until there was an announcement. John Zeckman and Martha Carroll, Timothy Cooley and Ruth Staver report to so in such and such a room. You remember those days, Brother Cooley. <laughs> <laughs> and our principal got on to us because we stood in the lunch line together. Students, I think they're going to start that next year. No, we're not. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been some changes over the years, Praise even before you got here. <laughs> oh, my. But if the four of us go to a class reunion, we already have a good attendance there because four of us graduated from high school together, and, uh, but we have many good memories, too, and that was a good one. I was part, uh, it was back in those days when Brother Cooley came to the school, I think it was 1983 when you came, and uh, I was on the uh, uh, school board up until 82, but then was on the general board, and we would be in general board meetings, and Brother Straub, in those general board meetings, would talk to us, and he'd say, we have got a new academic dean, and Timothy Cooley and he is taking Penview to a whole new level. He was thrilled that you were here, Brother Cooley, 
And he said it's another Cooley here at Penn View. And those of you who remember Ledette Cooley way back there in the early beginning. But Brother Straub was thrilled. In 1990, when I became president here at Penn View, Brother Cooley and I began a working relationship that lasted my entire tenure of 28 years. And during those very early years, Brother Cooley, you were extremely helpful. That's why I wish you were up here. Come up here and stand. I don't like to turn around. Come up here. You can stand right here with me. Um, During those early years, Brother Cooley, you were extremely helpful to me. Thank you. And I mean that. I remember we stood right outside the tabernacle on the graduation in 1990, and you said, Brother Zachman, what are your goals? Remember mm-hmm. that? Right over here. It used to be not the uh, gazebo. The what was eagle. The, the eagle, eagle. fountain. <laughs> Boy, it was hard for me to get rid of that one. <laughs> you were extremely helpful to me. I had no experience of being a president, but you never intimidated me. You were here for several years before I got here, and you never caused me to be humiliated. You worked together with me, and you gave me wonderful pointers. Thank you, Brother Cooley. We had many meetings together, Mm. many, many meetings. We discussed many issues that needed to be dealt with. We worked through difficult problems together. We strategized together. We planned together. We celebrated together Mm. when another student entered the harvest field to work for God. We cried together, and we've done that numbers of times. We could always, I could always share my burdens with you. You were that kind of a friend, a confident friend that was trusting and confiding, a friend full of conviction. Thank you. We didn't always agree, but we always worked together in unity. You were extremely workable. After the 28 years of working together at the school, we are as close as we've ever been. (laughs) You're a friend, a co-worker, a man to be respected, and a man that works together. On Thursday, during our conference, Brother Martin had those in the conference body to stand if they had studied under you. I was on the platform, and I could see all those who stood, and I believe 80%, honestly, I believe 80% at least of our conference body was standing. That's to be commendable. You have served on our general board since 1990. That's 33 years. And you continue to serve. In fact, you were elected this year to serve another three years. You've served on the whole missionaries board as near as I've been able to determine since 1977. That's what I found, if I'm correct. That's to be commendable. That's 46 years on the whole missions board. You've been so faithful, loyal, visionary, steady, and consistent. May you truly be honored today for who you are, and you are worthy of this praise. May God richly bless you and continue to give you strength to labor for him. We love you, Brother Cole. Thank you. Bless your heart. Young people, when you are in school and college, you are building and forging friends that will be for a lifetime. Our friendship, Brother Tim Cooley and myself, um, goes back 55 years, not as far as Brother Zeckman's. But I remember 1968, um, I was moving to Belfont to live with my sister so that I could attend Penn View. Brother Cooley's father pastored the church there, and now I was able to have a friend. I came from a church with only family, and so it was wonderful to be able to have uh, some friends my age. Um, We actually came to camp, and that first year at camp, um, we got to stay together, pray together with young people gathering at at that camp, encampment. We got to ride together to school from Belfont an hour every day here and then an hour back every day of the week. So you get to know somebody pretty good by spending that amount of time in a vehicle with them. And um, Brother Cooley, Tim, I'm going to call him today, was the same as he is now and same through the years that I appreciate. We also 
uh, auditioned for a quartet, like you fellows had to audition. And he got in the quartet, and I got in the quartet, two other fellows, and we actually got to travel together the same quartet without changing any singers for three years. And by the way, you really get to know somebody when you travel in that van, and I see the head shaking over here and um, over there as well. You know, if you can remain a friend in those situations, you're doing really good. You know, and it's always, it's also good. Um, my wife and his wife also were placed in a trio, and every once in a while we'd get to take a service together, and that was interesting too. But it's good to have a friend when you need one. I needed a friend. Brother Cooley allowed me to borrow his car one evening. I went on a date. And standing at the fender of his station wagon, we got engaged. <laughs> so you see, our friendship goes back quite a few years. We also were married the same summer. They were in our wedding, we were in their wedding, and so the young people, the friends that you're making will be friends that will last a lifetime. Through the years, as he pastored in a church, we were able to minister in his church, rally days, children's services, singing and revival. And so um, that's another way that having a friend is very, very helpful. And then um, the last 40 years, we have worked together right here at Penview Bible Institute. You know, in the later years here, um, when the coolies aren't out in services, they usually attend Mountain Road. And so I'm the associate pastor there. So I get to speak to him and preach to him sometime, but um, also visit in the hospital. And uh, just last week, I was in the hospital with them. And so my, my appreciation goes to him for being a real friend and being um, one that has stood by me down through the years. I am honored to be able to speak for him and also um, recommend that his future will be as great as the Lord has provided for them down through these years, and we'll be praying for them that the Lord will continue to direct their lives. Thank you, Barry Mason, for those comments. I'm Andy Cooley, and uh, I'm representing the Cooley family in honoring my brother Tim, as well as the school board. I met Tim Cooley 68 years ago. <laughs> he was three years old. I was newborn. I don't remember the day. <laughs> Maybe he does, I'm not sure. He thinks he does. Dr. Tim Cooley, my brother, and if you don't mind, I'll call him Tim. Of course, obviously, we grew up doing those kid things together. Uh, he was just as normal a, a child as I. We climbed trees, we swung on tire swings and rode bikes and, and all those things that kids do. When we became men, we put away childish things. Or, well, I should say at least he did. I'm not sure that I have yet. I would never diminish his dignity by... Uh, talking about some of the childish things that we did because we were just kids. But let me assure you, assure you that even as adults, family time is still very much fun together. Whether it's inner tubing behind the motorboat or jet skiing across the lake, oh yeah, you should see Dr. Cooley go. <laughs> or telling family jokes or playing hilarious table games together, in fact, when camp meeting is finished, as we have in numbers of years in the past, we are going to take a Cooley Family Week vacation, the Lord willing. There'll be lots of fun and there'll be lots of laughter and good times together. Now, as I said, I'm three years younger than him, so all of my life I have looked up to him as an advisor, as an older brother, as a mentor. I have enjoyed tremendous times also when we've stood shoulder to shoulder and labored together in life as ministers, as board members, or even just working together on different projects like brothers should do. Being his brother, I noticed that uh, 
the timing Brother Zeckman had was a little over six minutes. Brother Mason was just under four minutes. And so I, I should, as his brother, combine those and get ten minutes, right? <laughs> but I'm not going to do that. Yes, yes. Now, <clears throat> I'm delighted to offer these remarks for his celebration today. I wasn't ready to enter into some of the conversations that I remember so frequently my father and Tim being involved in. I didn't understand them. They were above me. They were, they were about theology and the things of God and the church. And I was three years younger, and so off I would go to play somewhere while they were in deep discussions. But I watched my brother mature through his teen years, I watched him into college years and marriage and so forth and into the ministry. I remember on one occasion, Tim made a decision that I wrestled with. I couldn't understand it at the time. We were both pastoring small churches. While he was never afraid of hard work and he was often offered various employments, at this particular time he turned down all employment because he felt that God was directing him to the study. I know that it brought various hardships on him and his family financially during those years. And I thought, well, you were the valedictorian of your college class in the ministerial department at Penview. Why would you need to do this? You're already smart. But I also watched during those years as that time in the study, that dedicated, disciplined time in the study, day in and day out, catapulted him forward intellectually. I saw it happening. I saw him growing. And across the years, all of us have been a benefactor of those early years. He went on to obtain his master's degree with a perfect 4.0 GPA graduate at Evangelical School of Theology in Myerstown with studies also in Moody uh, uh, Graduate School. And then he went on to his doctorate at Columbia International University in Columbia, South Carolina with studies at Wesley Biblical Seminary. All the while, working full-time at Penview and pastoring several churches. Students, if you ever feel like Academic Dean Cooley is asking too much of you to do well in your studies, he's not asking anything more of you than what he demanded of himself. And his life has proven it. I remember while he was still at that small church in Belfont, I remember he and I talking together, and we often talked about life decisions together, he was invited to come to Penview to be the academic dean. He was teaching at the Penns Valley Christian Academy as well as pastoring. And I remember us talking together about, I have a ministry here. I'm in the ministry. God has led me this way. And he's never doubted his call to the ministry. Why should I go and, and give up the ministry and work at the school? Until somewhere along the line, God showed him that in the years of ministry as academic dean of Penview, you will influence many, many more lives than what you could ever influence otherwise. And Brother Zeckman has already made a comment with regard to that representation in our conference. I might simply point out, Brother uh, Plank and I were talking over here, and he was going to mention it later on, and uh, I asked him if I could. Of course, this very camp meeting, every evangelist, youth evangelist, and children's worker is a graduate of Penview Bible Institute and has sat under the ministry and teaching and direction of academic dean Tim Cooley. Everyone except the song evangelist Mike and Brenda Maley, and we'll be happy to enroll them. Tim, along with an invaluable team of helpers, of course, brought Penview into accreditation with the ABHE. He then became one of the uh, team members that goes out to schools and advises schools who are seeking accreditation. 
He is also an online professor at Columbia International University, God's Bible School and College, Grace Bible College in Grand Rapids, Michigan, Hope Sound Bible College in Florida, and Ohio Christian University in Circleville, Ohio. So his influence in teaching is being far more widespread than what any of us know about. Speaking about the Cooley family, he's a family man. While we are celebrating this milestone in his life, let me proudly know note the whereabouts of his family. Of course, his wife Ruth is struggling with health issues, is at home today from a recent hospital stay. She's watching this service. His daughter Tabitha, a missionary teacher in Malawi, is doing deputation in the States today and is in services. His son Tim Jr. and Amy, their family, are at Vermontville New York camp meeting today, singing that camp meeting. He has raised up a godly family, including grandchildren who are serving the Lord. It might be regrettable in the human that none of them are able to be here this afternoon, but they are out there busy doing what Dr. Cooley taught them to do, serving the Lord. Would it be appropriate in closing to say that Dr. Cooley is still stretching himself? <laughs> He's always studying. His wide, extremely wide knowledge of subjects, his earnest reading of many books and materials, his forever in-school attitude and lifestyle has proven to us all that he has been and still is the man for the job. Academic Dean Dr. Tim Cooley, we honor you today. Well, my name is Hunter Anderson. I'm a recent graduate of Penview Bible Institute and sat under Dr. Cooley's teaching. And I think I learned something. I'm pretty sure I did. I might bring out a few things here. When I was contemplating what to say about Dr. Cooley, I thought, well, I could study anthropology to construct a, a good body to my speech and uh, flesh out everything I need to say. But because of being a little shaky on eschatology, I wasn't sh quite sure how I would just end that speech. So I thought I would just probably do away with that. But I think probably the thing I needed was a little bit of soteriology, and that would have saved the day. Did I do pretty good, Dr. Cooley? OK. <laughs> oh, don't worry. If you don't understand those big systematic theology words, I probably don't either. But. Thank you, Dr. Cooley, for teaching that class. It really was very beneficial to me, and I, I'm thankful for, for you doing that. I also thought it might be kind of neat to construct my tribute in biblical Greek and read it to everybody so that everyone would know that he is also very, very learned um, in that field study, but I didn't think that would go either. So don't worry. Don't, don't worry. I didn't do that today. But all joking aside, Dr. Cooley is a very well-learned man. And I deeply appreciate the time that he has taken to share his many years of experience and research and study in his classes and, and his messages in, in uh, college chapel and various places. And, but really, the honest truth is, those are, that's not really one I want to bring out in my little speech. And I will stay pretty close to two minutes. But his, God, uh, his God-given scholastic abilities is not what I appreciate, appreciate about him most no, um, what I appreciate most about him is, I, while I will cherish Dr. Cooley, the scholar, and Dr. Cooley, the academic dean, I mostly appreciate Dr. Cooley, my friend. I am so thankful for those times that you took personal interest in me, and I am certain that there were many times that I would wander into your office and ask you questions and need to talk to you about something that was going on in my life. And I can just imagine with the schedule that even was brought out by his brother um, that the honest truth for the, of the matter was, sorry, but my schedule is way too full, I don't have time for you, is what he probably should have said. 
But I'm so thankful that, um, I, that he took the time for me and so many different times that he prayed with me. Even in his office, I remember the last year um, at school, there was a time that I went into his office and asked him some different questions and talked to him about future ministry and, and different things. And, and we just knelt down in his office and prayed. And I just, I won't forget that, Dr. Cooley. I just so appreciate you and your leadership, um, even at the school. And, and uh, so today, uh, while I am debted to God... <laughs> for using Dr. Cooley to learn me a thing or two. Sorry, grammarians, um, for that. But I thank the Lord for your good Christian example and mentorship in my life. And congratulations on 40 years of service at Penview as academic dean. And I love you dearly. And I know God has, has and will continue to use you to help mentor and impact many others for his kingdom and for his glory. Dr. Cooley, if you'll step up to the podium next to me here on my right. My first personal connection with Dr. Cooley was when he accepted my application as a student in 1988. After seeing my high school transcript with seven Fs in my junior and senior year in high school, understanding my background of not being raised in a Christian home and recognizing my undisciplined nature as a 17-year-old, amazingly enough, he accepted me. What his acceptance of me proved was that Dr. Cooley was a man of compassion who gives young people a chance. I arrived and began a relationship that continues to this very day. The walks together as a student were meaningful. The visits, the counseling in your office have been extremely helpful. Your patience and guidance from even when I changed my majors five times in college was absolutely incredible. Thank you, Dr. Cooley, for what you did for me personally, but professionally, we never thought in our wildest dreams that we'd be working together as we are today as academic dean and as president. The last six years have been an incredible blessing for me to watch closely your lifelong investment in the lives of faculty, staff, and students. You have truly made Penview a legitimate place of higher education that is stamped with spiritual and academic excellence. Your 40-year service to Penview Bible Institute as academic dean has brought Bonafide recognition by the United States Department of Education, the Association for Biblical Higher Education and Commission on Accreditation, the Pennsylvania Department of Education, and many, many schools of higher education, denominations, associations, churches and camp meetings, conventions and schools and mission organizations, and many, many marketplaces recognize our graduates and our alumni as well-trained and equipped Christ-like servant leaders. I believe I can speak for everyone that's involved that Penview would not be what it is today and God's missionary church would not be what it is today without your 40 years of faithful service as our academic dean. So today, Dr. Cooley, it gives me great privilege to publicly acknowledge your 40 years of service to this camp meeting crowd You've already received a 40-year plaque during one of our end-of-the-school-year events, but today I want to give you this card, signed by many of us at the school with, with a few additional gift cards on the inside for your personal enjoyment as you're able. Thank you. Thank you. But more than these, I'm honored today to announce that the Penview Bible Institute Board of Directors has renamed the Administration Classroom Building Today, going forward, that building in its entirety will be called the Cooley Academic Center. With this portrait to be hung on the wall inside the building, painted by none other than one of your students, one of our teachers, Mrs. Lori Sanford. Dr. Cooley, we love you, and we thank God for your 40 years of dedicated service. And this is all we can simply say is congratulations, God richly richly bless you. Let's stand and let's give them a rising vote of appreciation. Thank you. Thank you, all of you. Thank you, Brother Durkee. Thank you so many teachers and students for such wonderful working relationships. 
across the years. Thank you for these honors, the honor of the naming of the building, and oh, the, I've never had a portrait, anything like that. <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I prayed a really long time ago, God killed a quitter in me. And he's helped me to stay. When I felt like I couldn't do it, and I've spent a lot of hours like that, God, why do you have me here when I can't do this? And he always reassured me, if you feel that way, I can help you. And my response is, if you're going to help me, I'm going to get everything I can. But if you don't help me, I don't want to see how bad things are going to go. But I thank the Lord for his help and for all your support. Thank Praise you. God. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you so much. Thank you. I want our two quartets right now. If you'll, I want you to take those cards. I want you to walk through this crowd. Just hand them to everybody. I want everybody to take one of those pledge cards they're going to hand. And in just a few moments, uh, Majesty's going to sing a song, and then we're going to receive our, our afternoon offering. And I know time is of, of the essence, and yet um, we're just honored. And I hope uh, that you'll be able to come to the beginning of the school year. We hope to have the name on the building and, and that portrait hung. And, um, and, and we certainly thank God for Dr. Cooley and all that uh, he means. But we thank God for all the people of Pinview. And um, when I became president um, six years ago, uh, 2017, it was uh, um, elected and now in, and installed in 18, and here we are. And, and people I would ask, you know, what are your goals? The board would ask, what are, you, what, are your, what are your goals? And I said, the reality is we want to complete the Student Life Center. And um, the Lord helped us to be able to do that. We, um, we had a goal as a board of directors to uh, liquidate indebtedness and raise an endowment. Uh, and, we, and we have done that so that we can seek degree granting status and and uh, we are just waiting any day um, to hear the word that we've been approved. Uh, we've been recommended by the Department of Education to the, to the Educational Secretary of the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. And we're just waiting for a signature. And so you pray about that. And we're just anxiously waiting any day and any week. And we're just, you know how sometimes things can go. Um, so we're, uh, we're thanking God for that. Um, also, the reaffirmation of accreditation. We thank God for how he helped us to do that. And then the, 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 the projects of faculty and staff housing, building renovations, uh, that's been an ongoing phase that's been happening on the campus, and, and uh, that, that's, that's getting close to coming to a, an end. And uh, we're just so excited and so thankful for how God has helped us. Uh, we've got two faculty residences that are up here on Penview Drive that are, that are in progress and about completed, and one's about completed, and the other one's going to be completed here in the next week or two. And um, we're just praying that God will help us. There have been people who've stepped up and they've worked hard and, and contractors who stepped out on faith to help us. And, and I, just, I just thank God for that. And it's just amazing. And um, this afternoon, we're asking, we're asking the Lord, and we believe the Lord wants us to, uh, to, to ask Him. And I, I said, Lord, you know what we have need of, $100,000 to take care of those projects. And uh, I remember a couple of years ago, we had our elementary roof project and other things, and we needed to raise $100,000, and we did that afternoon. It was incredible. And I was just amazed at how God provides and meets the needs. And um, it's for His cause and for His work. And um, we're trusting in Him. He's never failed, not one time. And um, you're investing in the lives of young people, faculty and staff, that are making a difference. And um, Penn's Creek Camp, God's Missionary Church, I mean, we are you, and you are us, and we're in this together, and we couldn't do what we do without you, and so we want to thank you, thank you, thank you for your support. I hope you'll take that pledge card, and um, I hope you'll um, make that a matter of prayer, um, and I hope that you'll fill that out, and uh, I pray that God will speak. Uh, I'm thankful that I can tell you that, that already this afternoon, we're, we're already at $30,000 toward our $100,000, and I praise God for that. I was in the hospital the other day, and somebody called me and, and said, um, you know, just they're praying and yada, yada, and whatever, and, and an individual that really never really calls me, and um, this person, I said, well, we're just praying that God will help us. I've got a burden on my heart. We're trying to raise $100,000. We're trying to do this and that, and this person said, well, you know, you misspoke. You don't need to raise $100,000. Uh, you, you need to raise, you know, $75,000, because I'm going to send you $25,000 to get you started. And uh, my heart was blessed, and, and uh, others have already sit, you know, spoken to me. I've actually I got a check from a church right here. I've got a pledge card for 1000 from an individual. And um, so we're already at 30000 And uh, I just want you to do your best to, 
to ask God what he'd want you to do. If there'd be two people out there that would say, you know what, uh, I, I can give and God has blessed me. And, and if there were two people out there that would give $10,000, it would make a difference and it would help us in the work of God. If there'd, be, if there'd be four people out there who'd say, you know what, I can give $5,000 and I can help to see the work of God advance right here at Penn's Creek. We're not receiving government funding and we don't get the state stepping in to take care of this or that. And, and I thank God that we can trust in him. He owns a cattle on a thousand hills and he's going to meet the need. And there may be four of you out there that God would just say, you know what, you could give $5,000. Or maybe there may be six of you out there that could write a check out for $2,500. And, and what a difference that would be. There might be eight of you out there that could write a check out for $1,000 and put that in the offering. And, and what a blessing that would be. There might, there might be 10 of you out there that could that make a $500 check and, and um, you hardly have to even sacrifice to do that. And, and if that's you, we'd be grateful for that. And there might be 20 of you out there that can just put $100 in the offering plate. Well, if, if we met every one of those goals, we, we'd raise another $70,000 and we'd hit that $100,000 mark. And uh, I'm just going to trust the Lord. There were years gone by in the yesteryears where we would take public pledges and we'd find out this and that. And, and we haven't done that for a while. And we're not going to do that today. And so I want the quartets to get the buckets. And I want them to, to get ready. And um, they're going to get ready to, um, uh, to, 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 um, to receive this offering. And um, we're just going to shift gears a touch. We're just going to shift gears and um, girls, I want you to come. I want the ladies' trio to come, okay? Um, where's their piano player? She's right there. And they're going to sing a song um, for the offering this afternoon, okay? And um, this song is, is my testimony song. And um, you've heard it sung before. And they're going to sing for the offering this afternoon. And um, it talks about the goodness of God. We've kind of been theming that all afternoon. And God has been good, hasn't he? He's never failed us, not one time. I look at what he has provided on this campus and how he continues to meet the needs of our conference. And uh, I just marvel. And yet we shouldn't because it's God. And God's good and you know, knows how to meet our needs. And so will you do your best to help us? We need your help today. Uh, and I told the Lord, I said, Lord, it's your work. Lord, you just, whenever you want to pay your bills, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, take, I'll sign the checks. And we'll get them to the vendors, Lord. We'll take care of the people. You, Lord, know the need. This is your work. And so would you pray with us that as God uh, would guide you and direct you, you do your best to give. Brother Harry Plank, our former conference president, current one of our board members, is coming to the microphone, and he's going to lead us in prayer. And um, would you stand with me this afternoon? And after he concludes prayer, you may be seated. They're going to receive the offering. We'll give you a report in the evening service tonight. The girls are going to sing for the offering and um, we're just going to do our best to mind the Lord. God bless you. And um, what a joy it's been to be in his presence this afternoon. Brother Plank. It's our school. God has blessed. Let's ask God what we ought to give. And let's obey him. Let's relieve the load for Brother Durkee. And uh, to the glory of God, good days are ahead Amen. for the school. Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you again for the privilege of being in a school service at camp time. We thank you, Lord, for what we've heard today. We've taken a little special time to honor one amongst us that has served us so graciously and greatly, Lord, because of your goodness. We thank you for Dr. Cooley and for his family. We thank you, Lord, for all the staff and faculty here at Penn View. We thank you for our president, and we ask, O oh God, in every case, they need your help, and, and Lord, they need your grace, and so we pray for them today. But now, Lord, this service, we come accustomed to it. We come knowing that there's going to be needs, and we would ask that you would help us. You know the goal they've set. It's not unreasonable, Lord. You have people out there that you have blessed with, with much, and then you have many people that can't give much, but they can give that portion that they're able, and all of it together, Lord, can meet the need. So we pray today that you would just bless in this offering, help us to please you and what we're able to contribute and Lord, meet the need, and, and when the tally is finally taken, we'll know that God again is faithful, and, and faithful through the faithfulness of his people. 
thank you again for this service. Thank you for your presence. Thank you for your goodness to us. Help now answer prayer, and we'll give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. God has been good, hasn't he? And he's worthy. He's worthy. He's worthy. Thank you, ladies. Thank you, quartets, for your ministry. Thank you, each one, for sharing today. And thank you for your investment and your support in the lives of young people. Thank you, the local churches that give monthly. I think there's eight of our conference churches that give every month. I thank God for those and those who give when we show up at your church and represent. Thank you for standing by us at special times, important times. Uh, it's just incredible, the conference family. Thank you to the businesses and business owners that are here this afternoon that support and believe in Pinview. 
And we want to partner with you. We've got a brand new Penview Business Partnership Program. And see Brother McDonald or myself, and we'd love to talk to you about that, how we can be a partner and a blessing to your business, as well as you being a blessing to us. And we'd love to talk to you more about that. And um, come back to pre-service tonight. The groups will be singing at 630 and the evening service, of course, at 7 o'clock. You'll not want to miss it. Looking forward to all that God has in store for Penn's Creek Camp. And let's just mind the Lord. Let's stand together. Thank you so very, very, very much for being here this afternoon. God richly, richly bless you. You are dismissed. Let's go rejoicing in the Lord this afternoon. Brother Jeffrey, give us some music on the piano as we leave. God bless you. Shake hands. Be friendly. You are dismissed. Mm -hmm.